you can love your parents and hate them at the same time. You know, you can love, you can love where you're from and hate it at the same time. And it's the hatred that pushes you forward. And it's the love that brings you back to it, you know? I'm Paul Payment. I grew up in Northeast Minneapolis. Northeast? Northeast Minneapolis. My wife and I live in Los Angeles. We've got four kids. I'm an artist, and teaching was always part of that. I was really inspired by the teachers I had, and I wanted to be able to do the same thing to students. <laughs> this is Matt Gleason. <laughs> he is an art critic from Los Angeles. He started a publication called uh, Coagula. He's the author of a, of a couple books. One of them is Most Art Sucks. Most Art Sucks, yeah. Minneapolis North High School. This is where I went to high school. Home of the Polars. Right? So, what's um, a polar? A polar bear. Oh, okay. When I got to 11th grade, I was taking an art class, and um, my teacher said, Hey, there's an art program going on over at North High School, and I want to recommend you for it. I loved it. It did, was a really good program. Did it help your art? I think so. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to go to college if I hadn't gotten here. Really? Yeah. I mean, the teachers were really encouraging. They wrote letters of recommendation so that I could get into MCAD. It was a really good experience. So do any of your landscapes hang in the, uh, in the school itself? Do you, did you they, they, it? they hang, um, my, my parents had a garage sale and they, oh, <laughs> they wow. sold all of them. They sold all your art, yeah, all your high school art. Sold at least it sold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the house I grew up in. My parents built this house in uh, 1960. Wow. It's the, the border of Northeast and Columbia Heights. I mean, probably the, the most unhip place to ever grow up. Like, this is the place that you don't want to tell people that you're from. Wait, what's the embarrassment? Yeah. I thought this was the arts district. Well, it is now, but back then it was kind of, kind of personality-less I, I, in a lot of ways, I thought. Did you ever have band rehearsal here? Oh, absolutely. The Blue Hippos, you know, the 14-year-old the punk rock band. <laughs> Hardcore was brand new at the time. The only other band that I can remember doing it at that particular time was Husker Du. So we were influenced by them. You know, we got to play with Husker Du, we got to play with Fear, you know, all these bands that were brand new to us. Black Flag, all these things were, you know, fresh. But nobody knew how to do anything. So that's what really attracted me to the punk rock movement, was that it was like, Nobody knew what they were doing. You that, still have that insatiable curiosity, you know, whether it's in your art or just your personality. I mean, you're like a sponge all the time. I just, yeah, I'm just, inter I'm interested, you know? Like, hey, tell me what's going on, you know? You're like, like the least jaded person. Is that, is that, does that come from being from Minnesota, you think? No, I, I just, I don't know. I'm like a puppy, you know? I, I want to find out about everything, you know? My first reaction to Paul's work was that it was well composed, uh, very structured, um, very well thought out. But most well thought out work can be really dull because it's yeah. just this didactic illustration of an idea. And yours wasn't. Yours was still a sensual painting. So when I found out that you had been uh, had a background in music, especially you know alternative subculture music, then I could I could almost tell what was going on in your art. Like you know you really were going for that precision and emotion. That, that, you know, like that guitar-based alternative music really always strove for. I always thought of Matt as an artist. I mean, out of all the art publications that are glossy, Coagula was just the opposite. It was like a, a punk rock fanzine. And even what he was writing about and the way that he was writing, there's a real kind of like sarcasm, a real tooth to everything, you know, it was, it was biting. See, in the punk scene, Taking people down was the norm. It's like if somebody like Journey or Styx, you know, or, or They're ousted. Foreigner or Boston, those were the bad yeah. people. That's the bad stuff. That's the worst, ugly stuff. Yeah. You know, and at least to the music industry's credit, they they evolved, you know, and yeah. the Ramones are now considered to be like one of the most important bands ever. And Husker Du is now yeah. considered to be like a big band from the time. And the, it the only bands, took 25 years yeah, though. But, well, you know, but, but yeah. at art, it's just still, yeah. it's like it was 1989, it was Jeff Koons. 2017, it's still Jeff Koons. To me, the art scene in Minneapolis is really great because there are artists that are interested in creating art for the sole purpose of, of creating art. 
I think in LA, the temptation of fame is always there, you know, but you're, but if, but if you're thinking too much about how to succeed, I don't know that you're ever gonna succeed. Yeah. You know. You, you know, and I think a good example of that is being at MCAD. People were just doing stuff because they were merely, there was intellectual curiosity about it. It was interesting stuff because of that. This is the, uh, the painting studio. You know, I mean, we don't get that much room, but we got these little cubicles and, you know, we'd come in here and hang out, you know, and, and make as much artwork as we can. And my whole thing was that I was gonna do one painting a day. Wow. Yeah, so I was cranking out paintings for maybe two or three semesters. And then out of that comes continuity. I mean, even though I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't really care, it didn't take long by doing that that you start coming up with something, you know? So that's why I'm such a believer in like, I don't care about talking about it, you have to do it. I don't care what you talk about. Don't, don't tell me what you're going to do. Do it and then let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got to this place today of producing, you know, and the work ethic that I got from, I think growing up in Northeast, it's like, hey, you have to work every day. The stereotype of the starving artist, is, it also covers all the lazy artists. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, this was, um, this was a cool place. <laughs> this is Hazel Belvo. Hazel was my senior advisor, uh, I think it was 1991. And you survived. And I survived. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I learned my professional practices from Hazel. I thought that every senior student who was graduating should have given a lecture. So everyone in that class had to uh, give a slide lecture about their work. And that was phenomenal. Do you remember that? Yeah, I, I yeah. do. And especially for me, because it was difficult. Mm -hmm. And so that was one of the things that I really remember about Hazel is that like, I learned a lot about pres the presentation mm -hmm. and to be able to talk about my work. Mm -hmm. and that's great. Do you think that was served you well? Oh, absolutely. It was invaluable. You know, we want to talk, we have to talk constantly about our work. And there's a very fine line between talking about your work and selling your work. Um, you know, because it's, it can easily come off sounding like a sales pitch. Um, and I guess being at MCAD, I never wanted that to happen. I learned that I want these to be as, I, I want what I'm talking about to be able to be seen in the work. So I teach at Cypress College. I've taught there for 23 years now. I, I love teaching. I, even if I, didn't have to teach, I would still do it. It's kind of sharing the information and sharing the benefits that I had and the gifts that I was given from my teachers to other people. It's, it's a bad cliche, but it's like being a gardener, you know, you just you know, you plant these little seeds and these wonderful things grow up, you know? And, and I love it, I love every, every part of it. <laughs>